What's poppin' players? Welcome back to a Two Penny Games Cast review. This time for Elden Ring. Now, uh, real quick, we'll go ahead and show, uh, say it right now. I forgot to record footage for this game, and uh, it's too late to do that. And we need to get this review out. So I pulled uh, a, a, like a two and a half hour video from MK Ice and Fire YouTube channel had some gameplay set up there. So I uh, I've just got that playing right here. So I have no, I don't even know what's in this video. If something crazy happens, I'm sorry. I can't. I, I, I just, I literally, I pulled it up, hit play, and hit record. So here we go. It's the first couple hours of Elden Ring, so it's gonna have the first couple elder hours of Elden Ring. Whatever Connor, he does. We've been playing Elden Ring. How much have you been playing? I'm, I'm about eight hours in. Eight hours. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I've not been playing a whole lot. You are where? Where, uh, where do you think you let's are? See. I saw the number beforehand. I am uh, currently uh, 32 hours into Fuck Elden Ring. It it, my my it. life this past week has consisted of going to work. Yeah. Working until 2:30, uh -huh. and then coming home and playing that, and then looking at the clock and being like, ah, shit, it's late. I gotta go to bed soon <laughs> or get dinner, and then I, I do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so a lot. and then for some general context, you're a From Software fan. Yes, I, I, I'm. I'm typically I, not, mm -hmm. but I've I've always respected From Software and, mm -hmm. and what they're doing in the in the game space. Uh, I toyed around. I played the intro level to Bloodborne, mm -hmm. and then I toyed around with the opening hours of Sekiro. Um, didn't bite on Sekiro. Huh? Didn't bite on Sekiro. It wasn't. It almost. Had, it almost had. Almost me. did. It almost had me, but the, the, then I don't know. I fell off, and something else grabbed me, and then I just never wanted to go back. Yeah. Um. So I'll go ahead and I'll get my my opinions out the way first, since I'm the new. I'm the newbie. I'm the. I'm the. I'm the, yeah. I'm the casual. I'm the regular game, uh, gamer. I've got a lot of mixed feelings about this game, actually, mm -hmm. which is weird because I was texting you. Yeah. And I yeah, said, hey, did. man, I think this one works. I think this one's clicking with me. And I was, and I was very excited. Quick a second, but you said it was clicking. I, it was clicking. It was clicking real hard. And then I got past the, the first real boss fight. And once you get past that first real boss fight, then it turns into a traditional From Software game yes. where it, it starts really uh, just being a From Software <laughs> game, um, which very quickly turned me back off and i haven't played in a couple of days now mm -hmm. uh, i do intend to play more but it has now turned into the game that i need to be in the mood for and i'm just not in the mood for it yeah. <laughs> uh, um after that first big boss fight you go into the traditional dungeon which are dotted throughout the entire game yeah it's where you get to the other big bosses of the yeah game. i don't i don't like that dungeon mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, which is funny because uh the the attitude i've seen from from software fans has been oh, this is one of this is a great dark souls dungeon it's amazing i thought it was good but yeah, people people seem to like it. I, this is that that I, castle, right? Yes, that yes. we're talking about that Stormvale yeah. Castle. Yeah, I hate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything before that was great. And I, here, let me say, let me say, let me say my piece with this. Uh, I do like this game. I think it's worth all the praise it's getting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and I think for from software fans, I think they've got something really, really special on their hands with this one. Mm -hmm. Something where like people liked Sekiro, but it seemed like. Fans were like, you know, they were like, oh, it's gr it's really good. You know, it's from software, so you're going to get quality. Mm -hmm. And it, it is of quality, but they didn't, like, seem to be in love with it like they were with some of the other Dark Souls games and with Bloodborne specifically. Yeah, I was the same way as well. Um, And uh, I, I think this one is, is going to be right up everybody's alley in that sense. But um, where this game is getting a lot of praise is its exploration and its open world and its and its wonder as you explore that open world, and all of that is true. It's it, The same praises happened with Breath of the Wild, which I thought were moderately true, but were overblown a little bit. I didn't think Breath of the Wild's world was that captivating. Uh, Elden Ring's world is mm -hmm. that captivating. I am constantly going, wait, what's over this hill? Yeah. Can I get what, what's going on over there? I, I see a structure over in the distance. There's probably something cool there. Oh, there is something cool here. That's fantastic. Uh, oh, hey, man, there's a cave in here. I wonder if I can get something out of getting this cave. Oh, my God, it's a boss fight. Oh, my God, it's a, it's a hard boss. Fight. Oh, my God, okay, mm. I beat it in just a few tries. Man, I feel good. Yeah. You know? And then uh, and then you do get to, like, the real boss fights, which they separate. I don't know if this is, like, a thing with, like, when you beat a boss, it says, like, enemy failed yes. or great enemy failed. Mm -hmm. Great enemies are clearly the ones that are, like, actually worth remembering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, some, some of the regular enemies are just sometimes different enemies that already exist in the world as yeah. normal ones or maybe oh, yeah. special ones like pumpkin head they have i've i've, I've been entered one boss area and there's two of them and they're bigger and they hit harder but they're the same kind of enemy i don't know what the fuck you're talking about <laughs> yeah. um anyways it, it, you know it, it, i i think of like oh man there's some like weird ruins over there what do i go oh my god there's like these like weird like flower things that are trying to beat me up and like uh -huh poison me this is oh my god there's a there's a giant flower that does mm -hmm. that shoots evil beams from the sky and i'm like oh wait 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 wait. there's like a little staircase here 
Oh, it goes down. It's like a little dungeon. What's it? Oh, it's a boss fight. Oh, this is how I unlock a magic mer merchant yeah. after I fight this boss. Like, it, and it's stuff like that that constantly makes me go, wow, this is cool. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm looking up, like, I didn't understand how the magic system worked in this game. And I'm, like, Googling trying to figure that out. Like, and I'm not upset that the game isn't telling me these things. Mm -hmm. Which I think is, you know, something, something to be praised of, of just the design level of, like, it's obtuse. It's... Not very clear, but at the same time, it feels inviting. Like, you want to learn the systems and the mechanics as you play the game. It's just that once you get past that first fight and it turns into a more traditional from software game that I go, fuck! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, god damn it, we were so close. If I could just stay in this open world and not be on this narrow path that you've designed that is expertly designed. But it's just, it's frustrating to me that I have to keep replaying and fighting the same dozen enemies because there's no way around them and i can't have them chase me through the whole dungeon mm -hmm. and then i have to get back to the, the one enemy who keeps kicking my ass mm -hmm. and i'm just sitting i'm like fucking I, uh, uh, and i understand like grinding is a little bit of it and going out and farming for points and stuff i don't want to do that mm -hmm. um you know but i and i thought i thought the open world was going to sort of counter that where it'd be like Oh yeah, sure. Go grind, go farm, whatever. But do it in the open world where you're gonna find you're gonna trip over something cool every thirty seconds, mm -hmm. you know. And you really do trip over something cool every thirty seconds, which is dope. Um, it's just it's just when they when they focus things up, uh, is where things get annoying to mm -hmm. me in the in the classic from software casual annoyance mm -hmm. ways. If it makes you feel better, a lot from my experience of the thirty two hours I put in, I've spent way more time. Uh, exploring and going out in the open world and finding out all these interesting secrets than I have spending time in the dungeons. So, at the end of the day, it seems like at least you're getting more of the experience that you overall would crave more. So just 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 push my way through. Uh, is what you're yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe <laughs> just. Yeah. And thankfully, it, it's the setup, especially of the first dungeon. I don't know how it goes later on because I only just now got to the second dungeon. It's set up in a way that's very thirty hours later. Yeah. Because uh, I chose to, I was oh, like, because I, right. I was so caught up in exploring. But that's what I—that's what I want to do. Is yeah. I want to go out and explore. Well, I don't—I don't care about this main quest thing that's happening. Well, I, I kept like seeing because what I like to do because this speaks to the exploration of the game is when I get the map for the area that I'm exploring. Because uh -huh. originally, you when you first go into a new region, there's just no—it doesn't tell you what landmarks. You don't see any specific like areas on the map because it's all just you know blanked out. Obviously, whenever you reach some kind of special area or a site of grace. It'll have an emblem there, mm -hmm. but that's it. So mm -hmm. you have to find the map to the rest of the area so you know exactly what's there. When I get those maps, I just zoom in, and I see structures just yeah. outlined on the map. And I yeah. say, okay, that's where I'm going to go. Most of the time, I go there, and there's something there. Sometimes there's an entire little side area. 100%. Sometimes there's a dungeon. Sometimes there's just items. Yeah. There's always something interesting just from doing that. Right? Yeah. There's no question marks also to tell you that it's there. So it's just like, and, okay, and, and you got to find out if what's there. You square. can always... There's a story to tell from there where you're yeah. like, I was on the run from these from this guard encampment. There was a dozen of them, and I ran and suck, uh, you know, was seeking shelter in a cave that they they refused to enter. But then that cave led to a boss fight, and th that, that this that and the third, and that gave me this item for doing this, you know. And it, it it's stuff like that this game really truly does excel at. Yeah, it does. And I struggle to point at anything that to where I say it doesn't excel at this. Its menus suck. I don't like the menus, but I've never liked From Software's menus. Mm. So I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I think, uh, that's a that's a that's a shield for many uh, speedrunners who have to just like they have to navigate that and know exactly where everything is. So it it is it is difficult to use. I, I've grown fond of it over the years. I, I didn't objectively really hate exactly hate it. When I first experienced it, from my yeah. first Dark Souls games, but yeah, I can understand how it's not the most it's welcoming. It reminds me of like Witcher Two mm -hmm. level, like, and that was not a good menu okay. system. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's like, ugh, like we've we've gotten past this, guys. Like mm -hmm. people know how to make menus. Like, come on now. Um, but yeah, I mean, and the game is the game's quite like even my mom walked into the room and was like, "Hey, man, that's pretty," and I was mm -hmm. like, "You know what?" kind of pretty like especially for like an open world game the level of fidelity that's in there mm -hmm. now granted uh you know you can see you can see you know where some shortcuts were taken you know like i looked off into the distance and there was a herd of enemies uh uh convoying across a road and they you know mm -hmm. when they got further it turned less into them walking and more of them just kind of it, 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 mm -hmm. like like sort of like just kind of uh almost like glitching across the screen it looked like mm -hmm. and i was like 
okay, not <laughs> not quite, you know, not when you quite at 100%, way. you know, yeah, 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 when I was a little, but not that far, mm-hmm. you know, and then I'm dealing with quite a bit of pop-in and stuff like that, but, like, I mean, it runs better than, like, even Horizon Forbidden West is running right mm-hmm. now, which is shocking, because Forbidden West is a first-party studio that with all the PlayStation tech on the PlayStation console, and this one, which was built for, I guess, really PlayStation, because it sounds like the PC uh, build of the game isn't that strong either. No, it had a lot of issues. Some people have, were fine with it, but a lot of people were having some kind of issue. Uh, thankfully, we're not because we're both playing on PlayStation Five. Yeah. Are you? Uh, I just saw. I just saw Home Dude fall and take mm-hmm. some fall damage. Have you taken fall damage? Have you died from fall? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. In the I open haven't. world, I I go on torrent the horse that you have. Yeah. Which, by the way, is a great way to get around. The map. Oh, it's fantastic. With the double jump, it yeah. being able to run fast. Yeah. Using and then the, of, uh, the like wind. the wind turbine things yeah, that yeah, get yeah. you up real high, real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good I way for traversal to work. Uh, but during those moments, there's since you could double jump, my entire idea was, okay, I can jump off a ledge that would kill me, so all I have to do is jump off of it, double jump, and then I'm safe. Yeah. It, sometimes I double jump, and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm still a little bit farther from the ground, so I'm going to take damage, but I should be able to live. And then I die. You need to. You need to. Uh, you need to wait. You yeah. Need to wait longer. Yeah. Wait longer. I know. You're, 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 you're too nervous. Sometimes it's like, oh, and then it gets to the point where like, okay, timing sometimes just kills me. So I have yeah. died in those situations. A couple times from fall, from fall damage. Um, as you know, I'm I'm a bit usually my 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 play style. I, I lean more towards like the stealth slash maybe it's like some magic routes. Mm-hmm. So like I I started out as a bandit. Yeah. Which sure I I was going in. I was like okay I'm not gonna output the most amount of damage. I can't take the most amount of damage. That's fine. I'll I'll counter that with stealth. And yeah, when you're crouched, you're damn near invisible in this mm-hmm. game. Oh yeah, you avoid a lot. <laughs> um, but my problem is is that it does that thing where like it's not clear. And it's it's a it's a hard thing to do with stealth games where like either like you assign it to a button in an instance and it's contextual and it's only like when the game tells you you can do it like how like Horizon and Ghost of Tsushima do it where like you have to like stand up and then it'll prompt you and be like hey stealth attack this this character mm-hmm. uh, that it'll work otherwise you're just throwing out a normal hit in this game it is not clear when that moment happens one because they don't prompt you and two like sometimes if they're like dude where the fuck is he he beat the first boss in that area where you're supposed to die so he's an area i don't even know wait i thought he died to that guy i guess not i thought i saw him unless he jumped somewhere else and this is also another area i I think he's just gone somewhere else connor this guy's crazy (laughs) um anyways playing i guess yeah he found that uh but like that's what's cool about this game is i'm Mm -hmm. looking i look over and i'm like wait what the fuck is that and i i want to go there what's happening over there like it's all cool stuff like that um but yeah the stealth is stiff and mm-hmm. rigid and frankly was done better in Sekiro. Um but functional enough to where a player like me can do what I need to do to to get where I need to get. Mm-hmm. Uh obviously once a boss fight starts it's just down to to understanding of the mechanics which oddly enough maybe this is just the way it's always been and it probably has always been this way but as someone who's never really played a lot of from software games um the mechanics are very simple. Yes, yeah. there's, there's not a lot deep about this game. It is really just roll, attack, roll, attack, roll, attack. Like watch for like the most complicated thing is the boss itself because you just have to learn the boss's behaviors and and uh, uh, attack patterns and yeah. stuff like that. It's where the meme comes up where it's like you know when your drunken father comes home and you're able to read his attack patterns finally. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. That was funny. Um, but yeah, it, it is it is a hundred percent just. You know, what you're doing isn't changing, but just the timing and the placement of when you're doing it does. Mm -hmm. Um, Which I think works for the most part. Uh, I'm I'm nervous about it getting boring for me. Yeah. Uh, Thankfully, one of the things that was introduced into Dark Souls 3 that's present in this game are weapon arts. Now, Dark Souls 3... It could spice up gameplay from time to time, especially certain weapon arts, but there was you couldn't customize it, and a lot of the times they weren't all that great. So generally what people did was just not use them, mm-hmm. and they go back to the general way that Dark Souls is played, as you just said, rolling around and hitting things. So in this one, the weapon arts, are really, at least as far as melee is concerned, I'm not doing a magic build, so I don't know exactly. I, I do, uh, I'm doing like a uh, some faith uh, spells as well, but I'm not primarily doing that kind of stuff. So I gotta find myself a my scroll. I can't find. I need to find a scroll. Yeah, you gotta find your right scroll. Yeah, that, that was like it. one of those things where it was like, "Hey, you can't do this spell because these stats aren't high enough." And then I got those stats high enough, and I was like, "I still can't do the spell. Why?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, this is what I was talking about with the googling." Where I was like, "Oh, I need to find a scroll. Okay, hmm. let me find a scroll." <laughs> yeah. It. Um, what was my original point? Um, build uh, weapon arts. Oh yeah, weapon arts. Um, 
thankfully, from, from my melee build perspective, the weapons art, arts in these games really spice up gameplay. You have uh, a wide array of them to choose from. I've unlocked tons of them, more than I expected to do uh, to have. Uh, not all of them for the weapons that I use, because sometimes, you know, it'll only be pole arms, or sometimes it'll only be, you know, slashing swords or something like that, or exceptions for colossal swords. But there's so many different ones to choose from. Yep, that's some of them are good. Some of them are just what the fuck? charge right into people, do tons of damage. I don't know where this is. He, oh, this might be the tutorial mission that it was missable by a lot of people like me. Oh, clearly both of us. I have no idea where he is. Yeah, yeah, I missed it too. I think it's near the beginning of the game after you die, which makes uh -huh. sense why he you, you thought you saw him die. I definitely, yeah, I saw. Well, I remember looking over and he was fighting the the spider thing or whatever the fuck that kills yeah. you. Yeah, and uh, and I remember looking over and I'd be like. I don't understand how he died there. Like, yeah. he looked like he was out of range of whatever he was doing, but he died anyway. And I was like, oh, oh wait, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, because this is that entrance. Yeah, most people, I guess, just go straight up those stairs. Huh. Weird. Look at us learning new things. We'll go back but, and, I'll go back and do that. It seems like you get an emote from it. I'm not doing shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll one-hit everything in that in that mission. Probably. Still do it. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably be fucking things up, too, mm -hmm. even with my limited, like, shit that I've got going on. Yeah, you probably would. Uh but Weapon Arts is a way that I think this game has really freshened things up because they're so fun and because they're so customizable. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have to get an item to customize them, I believe. I, I got it pretty... I think it's in Stormvale Castle, just to give you a little heads up. Ooh, there's items in there? No way. Is it yep. in that room with the fucking Black Knight who has, like, wind powers? Because he's the one who's fucking me up and, and making me mad. I, I, think it's behind a, I think it's behind a, one of those mist walls that you can unlock with stone uh, sword keys. Okay, okay. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, that actually, that's... No... No, it's probably not that. I don't even know. Anyway, we should play co-op someday. Yeah, it's fun. You'd probably you would probably just roast everything in my world or whatever. Sure, fuck, but yeah. I can I can limit myself. I can like <laughs> do some kind of like regular. Un let me use my let me use sword. my shitty sword. Let yeah. me use my shitty sword yeah, for you, Tavin. Easy. <laughs> Put on armor. Not use a shield, so I can't block. <laughs> not things. use a shield. We'll do a lot. We'll be on, we'll be on closer levels at that point. Oh, that's fucking funny. <laughs> Thirty-two hours. Damn. Thirty-two. Uh, hours. It, people are playing this game. For sixty hours and saying I'm not done yet. Of course, some people are done. It just depends on how I've seen much people you spend go ninety hours operation. and say I've, I'm still here. I don't yeah. know. What it, you know, I'm still like exploring things and having fun. You can take the game at your own pace. Thankfully, once yeah. you know the locations you need to go to, because yeah. you know, exploration in this game is very important to level up. Did example. you find Did you find the boss that only comes up out at night? Which one's that? Oh, I, I, oh, I oh, haven't oh. seen him. Someone Someone left a message and said, "Hey, if you come here at nighttime, a boss shows up." And I said, "You know what?" I'm cool. I don't want that. <laughs> I did that for an enemy. Is it a horse enemy? If you know anything no, about no, 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 no. Different enemy. Because you can even see him in the background there. That guy fucked me up too. Yeah, he's like, Tree, Tree, mm -hmm. Tree Sentinel. Tree Sentinel. Yeah, he's an asshole. Yeah, people <laughs> have been having difficulty with that guy. He's yeah. easy when I came back to him. But yeah, <laughs> for, for, for a Souls game to give an enemy like that right out the gate, yeah, it's he's pretty, up. pretty damn difficult. It's fucked up. Mm -hmm. But it's clear like he like he's not as tough as Margit, who's like the first no, like no. real boss fight of the game, and Margit is tough. Yeah, Mark, um, I, I ended up really using. Good. I ended up using. I guess this, is this spoilers? Is the, the, do people care? No, I, don't know. I mean, it's I ended up using my own uh, the the jellyfish summon that you get, and yeah. I even I I despite my best efforts, I did employ uh, the Roger uh, summon. It's like a little like yellow like outside of boss fights, like you can like bring in like an extra summon. Oh yeah, yeah. Roger is the one for Margit, and like he's just like this little sorcerer who was just really just kind of just there to distract him while I did all the real damage. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Sorcery in this game, I've seen, like, the next boss you're going to face, somebody one shot them with one spell. Because <sighs> magic is very, can be bullshit. And that's, this is, I don't Did know if I this is. Did I pick the wrong class, Connor? Should you, I have gone the magic route? If you can, if you want, if you know, once you know how to do magic, it's easy. Uh, I'll tell you that much. It I, is not uh, difficult. I was always told, I was board. always told the magic routes were not, were not the best in From Software games. So. I, I admittedly also say, they would say they're not the best for your mm. first time around, because mm. it does make some fights pretty boring. Uh, you, you, you know. Spells are usually ranged. This one, granted, it seems like magic is a lot better. So, for example, I know there's a great sword that scales and is required uh, intelligence to use as opposed to strength. So, now, it didn't really happen in past games. Usually, you would have to do a lot of strength and intelligence. But in this one, it seems to be a lot more forgiving to just magic users to give them varieties of how to play. Do you know what level you are case. right now? No, I, I, I never focus on levels in, okay. in 
Elden Ring. Why? What do you, what, do you know what you're at? I think I'm at like 14 or something. Like yeah. 15, 16, something like that. I don't know. So I'm in the teens somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, the upgrades are getting expensive fast. They they do. It. That. But granted, like once you do like a, a real boss fight, they just hand you tons of experience or yeah. uh, runes is what they call them. They still seem to give you a lot less than they have in past Souls games. Yeah. It makes sense because of the open world that allows you to. Yeah. Get I mean, you're so getting much. you're getting XP from everywhere. Like yeah. you know, you just play around for a little bit. You're gonna you're gonna earn at least one quick upgrade or something. It's just it, you know when they started at 200 and now I'm pressing up on 3000 per upgrade and i'm only at level 15 or whatever the fuck i'm at you know like it goes up fast yeah and i'm at the point where it's like i think my the amount that's required to level up is like 10,000 soul 10,000 runes but it's easy for me to look at it and say oh i have, I have 6,000 now it's, oh, it's oh yeah yeah you, it, it ums it up as the game you, goes yeah on. you just you just you know you're just playing and you go oh fuck i'm almost there yeah like, I, let me I just get there even thought for a second i was going to be too overpowered for too long because I was just defeating every enemy in my way without much resistance. And then you got to a boss fight. <laughs> and I, and I like, uh, funny enough, an enemy. And I was like, normal enemy. I was like, oh. okay, like, I'm just going to beat this guy. I'm not going to be big. And then they kill me. I'm like, okay, maybe I should start leveling up. You said, you said, okay, hold on, hold yeah. on, hold on. <laughs> got cocky. God. I, I, oh, there's just the sense of wonder that you get when you play mm-hmm. this game, man. It's unmatched. Like, I, I truly believe, like, th- this is what people were, like, when people were talking about Breath of the Wild's world and exploring the world of Breath of like, this is must have been what they were talking about. Because, like, I didn't feel that when playing Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. I feel it here, where I'm always like, what's over here? What's that? Oh, there's a little woodland creature. Can I <laughs> hunt it down? Oh, oh, there's, like, a little encampment over here. I want to go explore and see what's that. Oh, fuck, man, there's a chest. Oh, mm-hmm. man, I got a sword out of this chest? Yeah. This is cool. And And thankfully... The variety is off the level, you know, on a different level compared to past Souls games. Souls games always had a variety in enemies. They had a variety in, in regions. But this is taking it up another notch, which yeah. really does add to that. You're constantly you coming next? across something new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Still, still, me 32 hours in, still doing that. I've seen people go 60 hours and say the same exact thing. It's, it's, a, it's a very packed world that doesn't feel overwhelming. It seems because I can pretty much go and do whatever I want when I want. It's like, okay, if I want to skip this area and go on to the next dungeon... I can do that. You know, a lot of freedom here, and it's. Just... I think that a lot of that has to do with just how minimal the UI is. Like, uh-huh. especially like when you. I mean, like you said, when you open the map, there's nothing on the map. No. Like in terms of icons or question marks or anything like that. Compare that with uh, Horizon Forbidden West, which came out just the week before this, and it's literally like I open that map and 30 things come up on my screen, and I go, "Fuck! I don't! I don't fucking care." I don't fucking just fuck it. Let me do the main mission, which I'm a side quest guy. I do all the side quests. So do I, yeah. You know, but when games like Horizon or Far Cry just put a bajillion things on my map, I, I look there and I go, how much of that do I really need to care about? And mm. then, you know, you end up missing things that are cool and you do care about or whatever like that. Just because it's unclear if any of it's any, any good. Here, where they go the absolute opposite way where you're like... Yeah, I mean, it's a map, and there are things on the map, and when you find the map, like, for the region you're in, and it fills out some of those details, and you can start, like, pointing your direction and where you're going to go, where you see a structure on the map, and you go, okay, let me go over there, or something like that. But, like, it's it's a thousand percent, like, you, you could play this game and never open the map. You know, yeah. and you wouldn't be considered crazy for doing that. Like, it, it would just be like, a, oh, you're just running around doing whatever you want, just kind of exploring. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you run into it. a boss or a dungeon or enemies or items, and then you run and into they, them. The, you know, the, the Sites of Grace, which are like the, the um, bonfires. The bonfires, mm-hmm. where like that's where you go to like refill your health and get your health potions back and get your uh, uh, spend XP points. But like also when you rest at a Site of Grace, all the enemies respawn, classic stuff like that. Uh, they litter the open world, they're mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah. Like, it's literally like if you're lost and you don't know where you are, I don't know, pick a direction, walk for five minutes, you're probably going to find one. Yeah. You know, which is great. I, you know, it, 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 and it adds to this level of accessibility that I've never felt before in these games where it's just like, yeah, man, I mean, yeah, I'm stuck here, but, you know, I can always, because it's an open world, I can always be like, fuck it. I'm just going to leave for two hours and come back when I, you know, come back when I'm a little higher level. I'm going to go explore and do something cool over here yeah. because there is always something cool over wherever you yeah. know which is great i i hate to bring up breath of the wild every single time that this is, uh, we're talking about the exploration of this game but brother Wild, one of the problems it did have in that regard was the main method of getting around was to transport to one of the towers that served as fast travel points, yeah which was nice to jump off of it and see the nice views i love doing that and do getting the, closer to the location yeah it was nice but then once you were done gliding you're like okay i still have now i gotta walk a lot of way go yeah now i gotta walk couldn't call your horse whenever you wanted to you'd have to you know <sighs> Be at a stable, go to a stable and get him, or if he's people not nearby. Think, people think that's one of the greatest games ever mm. fucking made. It's pretty great. It's a pretty great game. Ah! It's, it's, it's a pretty like, good game. It's a good game. It's a good game. 
It's a good game. <laughs> Anyways, but this is we're not talking. But like, I mean, directly compare that with here. There's fast travel points everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. I don't want to walk five minutes, Connor. And you know what? I don't have to in this game. Nope. Which is a crazy thing to say about a From Software game. Or it's like, uh, okay, I I do want to walk for five minutes because I don't know what's beyond the yonder, you know, mm-hmm. so forth. Fuck it. Call my horse right there. It's not even a waiting, like in every other open world game where you have to wait for your mount to run up behind you because it's spawned behind you. No, fuck it. it you spawn on top of it. Yeah. And like, you can run while you it up it. and you're on it. Mm-hmm. Which is nice because when you're running away from enemies, you can just be running and you'll still in the run animation, call your horse and, and then, then just jump be on there it. and gone. And boom, yeah. you're gone. Like, it's so good and mm-hmm. it's so nice. Like, I really, really, really do love that. And then the, the, um, the flasks where you have your your you either you know you restore some health or you restore some fp or mana mm-hmm. your your magic points or whatever being able to balance those out and being like hey i have a set number of them sure but if i have a maximum of five i can do three health potions two magic potions i can do five health potions zero magic potions it just depends on how you want to do it i think that's inspired is that a thing that's always been there because it's fucking awesome or is that an uh, elden ring thing it's more of an elden ring thing it's fucking it? awesome every game should do that mm-hmm. You know, instead of littering my inventory with a bunch of potions that I'll never use, a la Skyrim, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just, here's the six things you need. Yeah. That's all you need, you know? And you don't need stamina things because just just stop for half a second and your character will catch their breath immediately. Yeah, it's one of those things you only use every now and then. And even though the system isn't as uh, as, uh, special, the inventory crafting, it does kind of... You help you do certain things like if an enemy is weak to certain fire attacks, you can just yeah. usually craft the item if you have the ability to do so. And there you go, you have a fire weapon. And, it's an, and, and it, that's where it usually just ends. Those situational yeah. uses where you need to have that uh, system in effect. Well, what, what's also crazy is like if you get to an area and it's beating your ass and you don't quite know what you're missing, mm-hmm. like you don't quite get it. The social aspect and the multiplayer aspects of this game of players leaving messages on the ground everywhere, like they'll be like, hey, try fire. And literally, I went three hours of reading messages of people saying, try fire, Mm -hmm. not knowing that that if I had gone back to that first real merchant that you find and pick up the the item crafting Mm -hmm. kit that like you can then get fire bombs and stuff like that. And I was like, why do they keep telling me to try fire? I haven't seen anything fire anything. And then but if if things start happening that way, it usually means go back, go look around, go, Mm -hmm. go find something that you might need somewhere or, or that this, that and the third. And I'm like. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, it, it, it they're very vague in Souls games. Very about vague. What exactly you can do? That's one of the things we I like about Souls games. For people that don't like those aspects, well, those message systems. That's when they really start coming in handy because then you can have some kind of direction that the game itself is not giving you. I do wish. I do wish the game was better at tutorialization. <laughs> like, and I don't mean in its vague from software ways. I mean in the in the ways of like when you unlock weapon arts. It, I'm not kidding. It throws three different walls of text at you, explaining what weapons are, mm-hmm. weapon arts are, and you have to you have to read all of that, uh, like remember every element of it, and then you click X, and it'll never tell you ever again. Mm-hmm. And to which it may be another three hours plus hours of gameplay where I never touch a weapon art ever, just because I never found any new ones or whatever. So when I do find them, I'm going to fucking forget how to do it. And I'm using weapon arts as an example. Mm-hmm. Uh, clearly, that one's an easier one to understand. But, like, I don't know, uh, like, different magics or different, you know, this, that, and the third system. Like, I wish there was, like, I wish there was a better way to where they could put more hands-on experience with its tutorialization mm-hmm. than just, hey, here's a concept that we have to explain because we know it's obtuse. So here's a wall of text. Mm-hmm. That doesn't work. Even with these goddamn ads. Yeah, you know, lots of I gotta ads. get I gotta get YouTube premium or some shit when mm-hmm. I do this next time. But you know, I'd be oh no, it's the double ad. Anyways, oh yeah, I I had a I had a point to make. Tutorialization, Tutorialization. walls of text. Yeah, um, I find it more amusing than anything else. Obviously, I I don't blame anybody for being upset about it because I just I've grown used to this. I it's mean, that's a-, a thing in games in general. Like uh, like don't throw a wall of text at me for to like Deathloop has the same issue where it's just walls upon walls oh, okay. of text for tutorialization. Don't do that. Just make me do it. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, and and like have it like singled out like like um Naughty Dog games do it fairly well where they're like, "Hey, we want to teach you this mechanic, so you're going to use this mechanic in this instance right now." Yeah. You know, 
as opposed to like, hey, I picked up a thing. Okay, that thing's not going to be used for ten for for ten hours. So here's a wall of text describing that thing. You better hope you remember. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the, the issue that I had in that regard, I think the only time I did was uh, with reloading crossbows. I didn't know how to do it. And I also didn't – no, not reloading crossbows, switching crossbow bolts, like using different oh. types of it. I was like – I found out eventually it's light attack and heavy attack. That's what it's tied to because uh, so you, ha- you have two equipped at any given time, which is nice, but I had missed that because I'd seen the text pop up and I'd press something, and it was like, that's it. While, while we're on that, uh, weird control scheme in this game. <laughs> Very strange. I, it, it, like it gets the basics right for me where it's like circles of eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh Right bumper, right trigger, those are your attacks. L2 and L1 do stuff do like that. Your left hand stuff. Do your left hand stuff as well. All that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Um, X is your jump button. All that makes sense. Yeah. Why is sprint hold circle? Why Why is to get off the horse click in the left stick? I don't know. Those are, well, the the, 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 the jump thing, I mean, not the jump thing, the running thing. Yeah, that's it, been there forever. That one doesn't. That one doesn't bother me much. Getting okay. off the horse by clicking in the right stick, which is your crouch button. Why am I crouching to get off the horse? I, I defined that out recently. Yeah, that's a that's a weird button. You don't crouch when you get off it, though. You don't. Yeah. No, it's treated as levels of elevation. Yeah. So they're yeah. saying, hey, you, uh, p- click in stick to go down mm-hmm. is is what the mindset is. So you click in stick to get down off the horse, which is weird. <laughs> yeah. It's it's just it's just weird. It took a second then, to find that out. And then. I like the hot king with the whole triangle, and then that opens up on different types of things, but I don't know if that's the best way to go about it. Yeah. But I don't have a better solution. So The thing about that, I, I same kind of thing before. Uh, I've forgotten the thought that I had about it when I first was trying to get used to the controls because I've become so acclimated to it now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I remember I was like, I, I understood why they, they did the triangle thing the way they did because in past games, triangle was something. Oh, this, has been, this has replaced all my... My like specific knowledge like that wasn't triangle right. heal. No, no, it was always square. It's always square the, was always heal. Okay. Well, it's always, square is always item use. Item use, which use is item, use, yeah, whatever yeah. is attached to it at the time. Triangle was something. Also, I like the emotes. Uh, yeah, I don't like how they're used with the with the dual sh- or the dual sense. Uh, with the oh. moving the controller around the the like the six axis yes. motion. Yes, weird. That that led to me having certain interactions where I would do an emote when I wasn't doing an emote and it was during a fight. And then I would get screwed. How did you do that? I don't know. I kept doing it over and over again. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. You're very. You got a lot of movement in your hands when you're fighting these boss fights, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, thankfully, you can you're turn out it here. Off. You're out here trying to cast spells, and you mm-hmm. end up accidentally uh, like pointing. <laughs> you can turn it off though, which I found okay, out. I was like, I was like, thank you. I can turn that off. Uh, but yeah, usually when it comes to emotes, I just I do it the longer way, which is to not have it hot keyed to anything, and just, just go to the menu. Go to the emote menu and do it that way. Yeah, maybe a little bit ineffective, but you know. Uh, I like the boss design so far that have occurred. Uh, you know, the open world bosses a lot more easier, consistently easier and simpler. Yeah. But that's because they're trying to pack a lot of bosses into all of these different dungeons. Yeah. To try and keep the whole, you know, souls worn. And they're trying to make dungeon. it feel as alive as this desolate world can feel. Yeah, and that, that could lead to some bosses being a hit or miss. You know? Yeah. Like recently, I got one that was great. Another, another time, not so much recently. Yeah. Uh, but the main bosses overall. First of all, they're extremely difficult. Like, Margaret, I was surprised at how hard he was. Margaret's hard. Because he's one of the first bosses you fight. And yeah. usually, the first bosses you fight can, like, can be kind of... They, they can be difficult, but at least it's something that newer players, like myself as well, to this game, can wrap my mind around. A little more just, simple. Yeah, a little bit more simple. Not not these bosses. Mar- Mar- Margaret will fuck you up. Yeah. That second phase was some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Got those faith weapons. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Fuck me up. Um, Is there a way to parry projectiles no 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 definitely not man that would have been nice especially against margaret oh yeah the yeah 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 Yeah, maybe there's a deflecting thing somewhere but i'm not familiar with it. also i don't know if this might be a spoiler i don't know because from software it's not like narrative things you spoil it's like encounters yeah mechanics and things like that but like so this might be like a slight spoiler margaret like you couldn't parry like you had to parry him multiple times in a row to actually get an opening to do a critical damage hit on which i thought was strange but also kind of cool at the same time i think the reason why they did that is i think i had mentioned to you before because i was watching you when you started trying to parry more often mm-hmm. uh there's a boss in dark souls 3 that becomes just the easiest one of the easiest bosses in the entire souls born series if you know how to parry yeah it, it can defeat some bosses so i think Wait. their idea was to try and prevent that from just being done which is funny because like 
you see the parry and it's an animation of thing yes. and I, I immediately started asking you because you taught me how to parry and i was like okay wait so like is it based off of like the animation of when i did and you were like honestly dude i kind of just feel it out and yeah. that's been my strategy now is yeah i don't know i just kind of feel it out and if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't yeah you know? there's a way there is a point i, I remember seeing a I, video i, I know I, there is and i'm sure if i really wanted to sit there and learn i could but like you can feel it out and parry i don't know 70 percent of the time yeah if you, you, if you it hone it in well. you know yeah you know? so it's like that's that's good enough oh oh you got scared you thought he was gonna jump off that cliff that's uh, i think i did something similar and you got uh, just as scared in that same uh, area so anyways um anything else you want to say about elden ring connor um let's see i touched on the battle arc. is this is this one of is this is this the new is this the new pack leader is this the new the new great from soft is this the best is this the best one it kind of is yeah you think so it's, it's got a lot of what made the souls games good in the past yeah and with a lot less of the negatives like so mm. for example dark souls one i'm talking in, refer, uh, in reference to the bosses after a while there's just at, like the midway point in the game the bosses become a lot less fun to fight and they'll become a lot more boring okay this game kind of due to the exploration and finding all these different bosses in different mm -hmm. areas and making the main bosses difficult more difficult made makes me not really feel that issue anymore whereas mm -hmm. uh, some dark, dark souls games would do that dark souls 2 notoriously came out too quickly and some of the bosses are just not well designed at all. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so, thankfully, the main bosses of this game are designed very well. Uh, like I said earlier... I mean, the fandom difficult. always talks about Bloodborne being the, the pinnacle. Yeah, yeah. Bloodborne definitely always had consistently just great bosses. Yeah. Every single time. Uh, I think that's... I haven't played the main bosses yet. And like I said, a lot of the... Uh, the you know, minor bosses are kind of used at certain points, and they're not ha they don't have as much design put behind them. So I, I can't really speak to the the level of quality on the bosses yet. Mm -hmm. But from the the two big ones that I've fought, I think there are two. Thirty hours only two real two, fights. Two big yeah. ones. Two big. Two big Fuck, ones. This world yeah, is big. It's very big, which I enjoy. Like I said before, uh, I'm trying to think what I haven't talked on before. It's kind of hard to. Oh, it does play very similar to Dark Souls Three. Uh, in terms of just the gameplay, obviously they include the weapon arcs that sh you know shake it up a lot more. Uh, some of them are a little bit overpowered right now. Like for example, I have something called the Blood Slash, ridiculously overpowered. I, in fact, I know one boss later on, it can just easily destroy him without much effort. Hmm. Uh, thankfully, I know how Souls games work, and usually those kinds of things end up getting nerfed sometimes a little bit too much. <laughs> so, you know. Whether that's a criticism or not, I can't really tell you right now, especially because it's something that I could use as I see fit, you know, weapon arts and such. But I can't really think of anything else that I... Okay. Because the exploration is the big part of this yeah. game that really blows my mind I, as far it, as Souls it, games go. It, 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 it's so good it blows my mind. Mm -hmm, you yeah. know, as someone who's not a big fan of these games, and I, I don't know how much more uh, 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 mileage this one's going to get out of me. Sure. It could, it could be another 30, 40 hours. It could be two. Mm -hmm, I did yeah. in anywhere in between, you know, uh, you know, it just all kind of depends. Uh, it's definitely gonna like, I'm going to play it until I get bored with the mechanics mm -hmm. and then I'm going to stop. Cause it's just that there's, there's some kind of narrative or something happening in the background. I've always said these the, from software games, they don't have plots. They have lore. They have, they have lore that ties itself into a plot that you are the central character of. It's the, the issue is that it's very hard to find it because some simple item descriptions will let you uh, find out certain aspects of the plot. And, and some of these item descriptions can be key items. Sometimes they're not. And they those items that would add depth to the story, as I would consider it, uh, and see, that's the thing. Miss. That's the thing that like from software fans praise about this game. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, you have to work for the story. And I'm like, no, no. No, that's not how storytelling works. You have to read for the story. <laughs> that's not how storytelling works. <laughs> that's not how sto have you ever read a book, Tavin? You a, read a, a books. Sto a storyteller tells you the story. They don't... Yeah, that, okay, that same mm -hmm. comparison, Connor. Let me tear this book up, hide it all around your neighborhood, and then, but like, also some of those pages are from different books that don't matter. Know that's, what you're telling me right now, Tavin? Yeah. You're telling me that I gotta work to read my book. It sounds... Pretty damn similar. Like, this is just a book that you have to work hard to read. You have to find out where the pages are. That's not good! <laughs> sometimes pages aren't there. And sometimes, and the storyteller thing, the storyteller in this story, and like all other Souls games, is probably dead at this point. So then, you know, there's no story to tell anymore. You just gotta, you gotta find it out yourself. You gotta be the story. That's what you're doing here. Ladies and gentlemen, that's <laughs> gonna be it for our Two Penny Games Cast review for Elden Ring. Connor, you like the game? I do like the game. I also like the game. I'll continue to play it. 
Definitely. I, 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 it, I will definitely load it up at least one more time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> From there, we'll see. Well, you got to play Triangle Story. I, I'm, I'm playing Triangle Triangle Strategy. strategy. That's, that's what it's called. Yeah, I'm playing that this week. We'll have a review next week for mm-hmm. that. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for our Two Penny Games Cast review and the end of the Two Penny Games Cast episode 84. Remember, you can catch us every Monday, 8 a.m. Central Time, youtube.com slash Two Penny Games Cast or mainstream podcast services of your choice. Please like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Share it with a friend. It really does help, and we really do appreciate it. Uh, until next time, have a great time. And Connor, say goodbye to the people. Goodbye.